Hello, in air monitors that I've got uh, for review today are made by a company that is not uh, super well known. Its name is Queen of Audio. I think it's pretty loud name. But actually this company is founded by the same person who stands behind the pretty well known Kinera. I reviewed few Kinera models and they are more well known in the audiophiliac circles created uh, they, they've created a few really good models so queen of audio was also really interesting for me i don't know why some companies creating these uh, sub brands but probably if they do it that they have some sense in that it's a totally classical model in terms of uh, audio design it's single dynamic driver plus uh, two balanced armatures so absolutely standard and uh, price is uh, pretty average it's 120 dollars if i remember right plus minus few dollars so anyway everything is targeted to be on par with other competitors and let's have a closer look package is simple stylish traditional so this model name is pink lady if i got their idea they named their models after famous cocktails and just uh, basic polygraphy uh, information 16 ohms of impedance 112 decibels of sensitivity so a bit on, on the sensitive side but still not super sensitive copper pl plus silver braided uh, cable 2 pin 0 0.78 millimeter connector so everything is pretty traditional inside of the of that uh, cover there is another box with more polygraphy also specifications are printed here and actually you can see that uh, some ideas of design that is common for the Kinera is used here too so let's open this box also you can see that they have some image printed here looks all that uh, small details look looks pretty attractive card with uh, with social networks and QR codes for them and yet another uh, small piece of paper with how to with frequency response specifications and accessory set so. and inside you will have the case with all the necessary stuff so traditional round case made of nice I'm not sure is it uh, real leather probably it's uh, some kind of pleasure or something like that but i don't think it makes much difference inside we will have in air monitor themselves stock cable and two set of tips so white silicones with wider boards gray silicones with narrower boards and a pair of foams so accessory set is pretty good more and more companies understand that decent accessory set is important hope one day even kz will understand that so let's have a pair of tips usually the biggest ones are fitting better for me small stripe of velcro holding the cables and even a protective cap for the jack so all the necessary tiny details in terms of design they are pretty basic actually in some reviews i have seen more colorful version with some swirls on the on their shells but actually this version is made of absolutely stylish classy black uh, uh, black so probably it's acryl not sure which kind of plastic it is but actually it's black it's glossy and actually surprisingly it uh, doesn't uh, catch my much fingerprints of course a bit of uh, fingerprints are stained but not too much so i really like that and on this uh, shiny black surface company's lo logo looks uh, pretty attractive 
In terms of design, in terms of uh, fit quality, in terms of wearing comfort, they are good. Everything is smooth, everything is rounded, so they fit in nicely into ears. Maybe unless your ears are the smallest ones, but in medium uh, ears like mine and big ones, they will fit without any problems. Here is vent hole. Spouts have uh, average length, even probably a bit less than average, so sound isolation is also a bit below average, but uh, it will be enough for noisy street. Uh, there is slight uh, lip for holding the tips, I'd like it to be a bit uh, bigger, but anyway it does it, its job. So let's do that. So here they are. They will due to this shorter spout they will be really critical for tips but probably the biggest ones will fit me so build quality is nice they look really smooth seamless so nicely built cable is made replaceable here used absolutely traditional uh, two pin connectors so i like that idea and so no recessed sockets recessed pins or something like that Stock cable is also nice, it has ear hooks format but without memory wire and it has uh, four wires per each ear, carefully braided, really soft, so you know really nice looking cable, so metal splitter, chin slider bead and eight wires here goes down to the regular straight jack. So in terms of accessory set, in terms of design model looks pretty attractive and uh, done nicely so durable attractively looking and so on and so forth but without something fancy in design but everything but still stylish and of course about the sound this model doesn't require any extended burn-in maybe a few hours will be sufficient but anyway they burn in in really quickly it's more important to find the proper tips that will give you the best sound isolation, but uh, for me this uh, black stock silicone ones uh, gave a decent result, but maybe for someone will be necessary something like spin fits or symbio ear tips. Let's have player to give some examples. It's fuse. M11 Pro and let's uh, proceed uh, to the sound description. So for this uh, pink lady, Queen of Audio created a bit unusual signature, but actually from another hand, what is the purpose of creating in-ear monitors with uh, this common signature? We have a lot of models with absolutely no difference. So for this model they've decided to make a fun V-shaped signature with accented low frequencies and uh, comfortable treble, but of course with uh, normal resolution due to balanced armatures. So bass is accented, uh, even a bit uh, more than average accent. They are maybe not uh, super bass heavy, but leaning towards the bass heavier side. Low frequencies have uh, good depth, uh, really well controlled. They are not the fastest, uh, so they are a bit more uh, tuned to be more impactful, more weighty, more warm, so resolution is normal, maybe I don't, I, I don't know how to express it, normal but not superb, so it's not the most fastest dynamic driver, but it's neither bloated or slow, it's just uh, with additional weight and mass and it's tuned to be enjoyable and weighty. It's uh, pretty good with synthesized low frequencies and uh, pretty good with acoustic instruments, they, but they are sounding a bit uh, bigger and a bit more accented than they should be. But actually it's just, you know, a one case of tuning for those who like such signature. In some cases it gives you really pleasant uh, sense. And actually here is example of such case. It's a pain of salvation, acoustic uh, album, falling home and uh, chain sling. In this uh, acoustic, uh, and I'm not sure is it live or is it studio album, well may, most probably it's studio album of course. 
it's uh, not live. I don't know why I saw, saw that. So in this album they have really good uh, drums and bass lines sounding really bold. And uh, with this in-ear monitor they are sounding even a bit bolder. So it's uh, a bit not realistic but sounding really really pleasant. It's kind of a spice for the music. Mids are recessed comparing with, uh, low, with low frequencies, but uh, not too much. They are staying pretty clean and clear with a bit of added weight, so these in-ear monitors are playing more in macro style. They are not trying to accent the micro contrast, they are not trying to get the all tiniest details. Instead they are adding a bit of emotions and a bit of weight to the tune, giving you uh, more uh, body for the instruments, more body for the vocal and so on. They are good in representing things like impacts, blows, so some fast transitions are also okay with them. Imaginary stage is about average in width and a bit above average in depth, so yet another model with uh, depth layering uh, a bit better than uh, widths. Uh, and uh, also they of course are pretty forgiving for the quality of records, but actually good recordings will be a plus for them, sounding will give them more sense of realism. And as an example for the mid frequencies, I've got... I've got probably the best live album, that's, uh, that's why I actually thought about live album on the previous track. One of the best live albums in the history of world music, it's James Brown, Live at the Apollo, 1962, and it's a great example of uh, how artists should work with audience. From the early beginning he grabs the attention of the audience and he holds it, holds it until the end, performing at 100% of his uh, power. Really recommend you this album. There are pretty well recorded versions and this one is one of them. Maybe, of course 1962 wasn't the era of the perfect audiophilic records, but still uh, really good uh, record quality, really good mastering and that will give you this sense of presence, that will give you that sense of audience and so on. And with this in-ear monitors a bit of added weight suiting uh, James Brown's voice and their uh, focus on the macro dynamics allows the, these in-ear monitors uh, hide a little bit issues with record typical for that uh, time. And treble is also treble is also a bit accented, but accent is uh, slight, just to compensate a bit low frequencies, but not enough to make them bright v shaped. So treble has uh, a bit below average extension, but still pretty normal for them, for the music that they are created for. Nice resolution, a bit uh, faster attacks and decays than, they, sh they, sh than, than should they should be. It's typical for many balanced armature tuning, so don't expect audiophiliac rich uh, layering or overtone saturation, but uh, they are sounding pretty comfortable and at the same time they are not too veiled and too moved to background. It just, you know, my to my taste it's just normal version of polite treble. I like uh, more forward treble, of course I like more crispness and so on, but uh, for treble sensitive people this model will be a really nice option to consider actually. And as an example for this part of Sonic Spectrum I've got Nazareth, Nazareth. Love Hurts, their probably most famous song, and uh, I don't know why, but actually in all recordings Nazareth uh, like uh, percussion, they are always accenting this part, and this one is not an exception, uh, but with this in-ear monitors uh, percussion sounding uh, realistic and at the same time not too bright and not too forward. and. Uh, it's a good news for those who don't like uh, treble. In terms of pairing, uh, they require some uh, 
basic from entry to mid-range dub, no need in uh, something exp fancy, but uh, smartphone probably won't drive them to the full potential, so just something uh, with, or maybe some smartphone with dedicated digital tonal converter will be a decent option too. So basically they need good resolution and good control that uh, digital tonal converter gives. They are a bit more on sensitive side, so blacker background will be a plus for them, but not too super sensitive to gather any possible noise. And uh, speaking about the comparison, just a pair of models to give a basic idea, so few F9 Pro, they are sharper with uh, noticeably more treble, with uh, more treble peak, with, uh, and uh, with a bit more V-shapeness in signature while this one has less treble accent and a bit warmer mids and a bit, uh, actually not a bit, uh, noticeably deeper bass comparing with Fio F9 Pro. What else? I don't know, Fio FH1S, because they were recent on my review, totally different, more detailed, more natural, with less uh, bass, so, you know, different signature. Jade Audio EA3, uh, Jade Audio a bit uh, faster, especially on mids, and, uh, and on the treble they have a bit more treble accent, on the lows this has also more low frequencies, so basically, I don't know, if you're interested in some additional comparisons, just uh, please feel free to ask, and uh, let's probably summarize everything, so nicely built, uh, uh, why uh, normally priced model for those who like uh, warmer sound signature but with normal clarity it was queen of audio pink lady thank you for listening and have a nice day